looky, looky. It's another episode of Harp's Court. And uh, my guest this afternoon is uh, my main man, Charles Oakley. Uh, played together in New York for two and a half, three years. I, I'm a big fan, first of all. And I, I, I'm so happy and privileged, man, for you to, you to stop by for, for me. Man, you know, when you came to New York, it's the same feeling when they said <laughs> we traded for Derek. I say we got a point guard. We got a chance to get the championship. Yeah. We got there. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, you're very welcome, man. Listen, Oak, I want to get into a lot of different things, but I want to talk about your book. And the question I have about this book, man, The Last Enforcer, is did you accomplish what you wanted to accomplish? A lot of people don't get an opportunity to right. write a book, tell their journey, tell their story. You were able to do it. Did you get all out of it, everything out of what you wanted? Uh, you know, it's like life, it's steps. And I think I took a big giant step, mm -hmm. but it's still some left for a sequel, you know, if I want to do another part to the book. No, the book is just a book that, uh, you know, brought up how I was raised from the grandparents and your family, your aunts, on friends along the way. Yeah. Uh, your journey for us growing up in the neighborhood wasn't great, but uh, you made it out and get to the NBA and meeting so many different guys from you up to Michael and Scotty. You know, Patrick, uh, Vince Carter, playing with some guys with great IQ for the game. And, you know, it was just one of them things. Let people know the other side of me. It's just, you know, how was, it wasn't easy making it out of the city of Cleveland and going to Virginia Union, small history of black college. But a lot of hard work involved in preparation for the book and where I went to the NBA in my life period, a lot of hard work. Well, well talk about your life for a second. Oh, you, I don't think everybody knows that you grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Home right. of uh, Steve Harvey, a lot of a lot of people talk about your your upbringing and all of those different things. Well, upbringing, you know, mom had six kids. Uh, basic raises, you know, through her and um, you know, my and like I said, my grandparents and my aunts and uncles. Uh, and you know, we all had a chance in life to uh, do different things once we got older. But it was just in the city of Cleveland. A lot of things were going on. Uh, I stayed out of trouble, but trouble's right there. Drugs and trouble. You stayed out of trouble? <laughs> yeah, I stayed out of trouble. It's growing up as a kid, you know, because a lot of guys I went to school with and other things, they turned left, I turned right, and uh, they went in, inside the penitentiary for years. And like I said, I went off to college, and, you know, I escaped some of it, but it's still out here in the streets. You can never escape everything. But right. as you get older, you grow within yourself and find out that, you know, you don't want to go where you see smoke at. Sometimes that's a bad way to go. So sometimes I went away from the smoke. Oh, you know, we're old heads, man. We've been there and done it. And right. clearly the league has kind of changed, I, I, I think, when you, you think about what, what do you think about the state of the NBA? You like it, indifferent to it. What, what do you think about it? For example, John Morant said he would have given Michael Jordan smoke. I, I, I know. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's out of hand for us. <laughs> I don't think the young guys really know the history of the game. We just lost one of the best guys ever with the bat for the whole Let NBA, Bill Russell. Yes. But, but I think the young guys got to really realize that somebody made a way for everybody. And like I said, Bill Russell, you go back in what he did. And I know the NBA was in a stage where we don't have eight teams in his era, but it grew from there. And now you got 30 teams. You got a lot of teams still like, you know, still fighting to try to win a championship. But I think the younger guys got to realize that that's close. You're making 20, 20, 30, 40 yes. million a year. That, is, that ain't just the NBA. Yes. You know, one, someone built some bridge for you to cross to I, get to that point. Yeah. But you have to respect the guys who put the work in. Yeah. I don't think the younger guys are putting the work in. They said they are. By watching them play, you don't see the work. But they're still getting paid. Mm. So let me, let me ask you this, though. So would you have survived? Could you have played in this era? I think, yeah, I think it's a lot easier to play. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, you know, for the work we used to do, you know, have a playbook with 40, 50 page, <laughs> pages, mm -hmm. a lot of plays, a lot of details. It, it builds you up for the moment. I think now they have you uh, a book playbook now may have 10 pages in it. It don't explain the whole education about NBA, this and that, how you – you get better, get stronger as your career go on. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the old heads, when I got to the league, they make sure that you didn't skip over no steps. Yes. Every step. 
Now they skipping over steps, and now they and teams wonder why we not winning because you're not teaching them how it should be. The game should be played. Wow. Now you're going, you paying for names, but not getting the money, you know, investment back out. Of the, you know, like the buying a bad stock. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> so the NBA, you know, you yeah, some of them make it, some of them don't. IPOs. So I think the guys are uh, they need to pull back and really realize that someone made whatever you getting, someone made it happen, not just you. Yeah, listen, look, I I know you uh why, why don't you coach? Why why hadn't you gotten into coaching? I know you had a little brief stint right. with Charlotte. I think Paul Salas was the coach there. Charlotte. Right? Yeah, Paul yeah. Salas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Michael Jordan. Why why I was done the, Go ahead. Why did you never get into it? I, I thought you would make a great uh, coach, to be honest with you. I, I, I think, you know, I have a great IQ for the game. But like I said, the form of the game, like I said, it's in a different space now. They yeah. don't want the full detailed coaching. They want someone who just show up and be, you know, no trouble, you know, no troublemaker, really committed to your job. And, you know, they don't want you getting on players no more. I don't think the players can take that like, well, you right. you, you, you got to kiss, you got to kiss their, you know what, basically. Yeah. yeah. It, when you take too many shots, so that's not your shot. You, let's run offense. They don't want to run offense. They want to run and gun. So I was trying to tell some guys, they, you know, I don't mind you doing what you do, but you still got to work in your craft. Mm-hmm. They don't, they don't want to work, but then the game comes, they want to take their shots. I said, it ain't going to just happen because you're making 10 or 15 million. And they paying you because they need bodies, not because you're a great player. Now, when you show me you can mature and get your game level up to a point, I can respect that. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a tug of war right now with the NBA for us. Like the style they playing, every team want to be a you know copycat, but only Golden State can show you the blueprint. <laughs> they got the blueprint for doing. They got right. the best shooters and they got best coaches. They got the best, best role players. Mm-hmm. So I think teams, you know, yeah, you can copycat some of their style, but you still have to mix it with your own style. But it's 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 a free for style game now. Everybody feel like they're important to the team. So that's what that's why a lot of teams never get to a point because everybody you can't have six or seven guys looking at the rim, no matter how good you are. Mm-hmm. Somebody still got to fulfill roles. Hmm. Let me ask you this. Um I, I remember when when I was in New York, when we played together mm-hmm. there, I remember coming over to the house. Mm-hmm. And uh, you 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 throwing together a spread that I'm gonna be honest with you I didn't think you were capable of putting together. <laughs> right. and a lot of people don't know it, Oak, but you have some <laughs> chef skills, man. How did right. you how did you get into you know cooking and, and and looking out for people from that standpoint? Uh, just just come from the heart from the family growing up. How they used to feed for people in the neighborhood, people in family who don't have... Do you have a you license? Know, are you a licensed... Some sources, huh? I'm sorry, okay. are you a licensed chef? No, I'm not licensed. Okay. But uh, I'm on, I'm on the... I'm right there. Mm-hmm. So basically, I was homemade, you know, but uh, I figured the things out. To cook, you got to be... You got to know food. You got to know food texture, how to cook it, low or high, understand the season. So once I got all that down, everything else just came easy. Mm-hmm. But just, just you know, being in the league, I was like, my thing is I'm, I'm about chemistry on the court, off yes, the court. I, I like to see my teammates happy. So when I always can cook them a meal, I try to, or someone invite me over to cook for the team. That would just, I would just, that would just come from the heart. Yeah. Favorite thing to cook? Favorite thing to cook? They ask me that all the time. I just tell them <laughs> I'm, I'm the favorite thing because I'm coming cooking for you, so... <laughs> I try to be good in everything I do because I know it's tough. They say, it's tough, but when you put your mind, body, and soul into it, like I do in the kitchen, yeah. you're gonna come out good. Any 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 fancy Italian dishes that you you? you I I can cook the, you know, I don't know lasagna's fancy, but I I can cook a cup of you know white sauce, uh, fettuccine. I can do a cup of. I mean, you know, I just try to be you know good meatballs with pasta, so. I just try to learn how to do the basics. And sometimes as you go, you always add on. Uh, I think that um, some people just get called to like, it's take a long time to do this. No, once you get it down, you got to practice. Like anything else, you got to practice to get good. So <laughs> I don't practice with my friends. I try to make sure when I cook for them, it's at a high point that I, you know, I'm at least get a B plus. So B plus is always passing in my book. Man, I can I can barely boil the eggs. So, so <laughs> shit, I was, right. I mean, well, I, mean, I, get, I respect that. I, I just respect your game yeah. when, it, when it comes to that. And I remember. But at least you can say you can you barely boil. Some people can't, don't know 
don't turn them on to get started balling. <laughs> so at least you can, you can, you can ball them. <laughs> right, right, right. Listen, um, you, we played together in 94, lost to the Rockets in 94. Or we played together for, for two and a half, three years. But right. we were in the finals when I first got right. to New York. And um, I've always wanted to ask you, why, why, what happened to us in, in, in the finals? Why, why do you think we, we, fell up, we came up short? Um, I mean, you know, I think that um, as a team, you know, we was there and we went, you know, first three rounds and got to the finals. I think we we adjust, but I think we didn't do what Houston did. We didn't stay with the game plan. Mm -hmm. I think that's how they got us down the stretch. They stay with the game plan in and out. If you get a double team, pass the ball out to the open guy. So we didn't trust one another when we in the moment that we need to be trusted. And if you don't, you know, even Michael Jordan switched the switch, switched that switch when he was got double team mm -hmm. and he packs the packs and Steve Kerr, Craig Hodges, mm -hmm. and we didn't do that. We our best player didn't didn't do that. And best player talking talking about Patrick. Patrick, yeah, Patrick yeah. didn't do that. Akeem did it. Sam Cassell, he won the biggest shot. Robert Hoy in New York. So, I remember it. I was going. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that besides that, we we should have won the series. We should have won it in five. I tell other people. Because we had it going. Yeah, we were they a better – I thought they, we were the better team, to be honest with you. I, I thought, yeah, well, you know, you to say now. Yeah. You know, they're going to say that they had a team and da 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 this and that. But, hey, they won the series. You give me credit. But we had a great chance of winning the series. It went seven. went down to the last two, three possession. Like I said, they made a couple of plays down the stretch. We didn't. So, I mean, when you can go seven on a home team court and be two possessions and win a game, and you, I mean, it's it's hard. You don't want to lose, but when you lose, you can you try to look for things like why did we lose? Why we didn't do this? Why we didn't do that? But I, the base said the best player always win, and I think but, in that series, the team showed he was a better player than our best player. Yeah, I mean, you're, there there are a lot of uh, you're a real one, and everybody knows that. I mean, everybody that's ever come through the NBA, they they know Oak is gonna give it to you raw. Um. Isaiah Thomas or Steph Curry as as players? Who who, who do you think? As closer? No, just as players, period. Um, I mean, wow. I mean, I know men Zeke have some running in this net. Right, right. <laughs> and I think at this point and what Steph done in his career, and I think this was Steph's best, best career. I think this was his best year in his career because – the regular season, then the playoff, how he stepped it up when he needed to. He put his team on his back. Yeah. Even though, you know, Boston in, in the championship, but he he had out of five or six games, he averaged, you know, he averaged 30 something. All six, you know, you average out all, over 30 some points. And I see like he just hit the big shots when they needed. Uh Isaiah, I mean, go back to when he played, he was he was a dominant. He was the best point guard, small guy besides Magic. But I think if I had to still build a team. Between Isaiah and uh, Curry, I'm taking Curry. Not because of Isaiah can't play. Um, I just think he cried more. He, you said what? I'm sorry. He, he, he cried uh, He cried more. Who Isaiah did? <laughs> yeah, he cried Zeke a lot more. was a crybaby. <laughs> yeah, he's crybaby. He, you know he would disagree with that for, for sure. Uh, well, you know, right. I, gave me, I, gave, I know he's from the west side of Chicago. <laughs> he he, he loves saying he's from the west side. <laughs> I mean, I said Chicago United Center on the West Side too. Who played there? <laughs> Michael Jordan. So that was good. you. You took the words out. I of think he mind. took Isaiah claim the fame away. He said he from the West Side because yeah. Michael Jordan put six championships over there. Yeah, I know you got two, but uh, yeah, yeah, they always told me you can divide two into six and get three, but uh, three is <laughs> a lot better than two. Facts. Listen, uh, Michael. You said Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. LeBron James. Uh, we and I had this conversation many times. I mean, both of them, they like my right hand, left hand, and I'm in the middle. So I just call both of them frosted flake. One just got more sugar on it. And I think that <laughs> I give Mike the edge. You give him the edge? Why? Wow. I give him the edge. Because you know, of LeBron, this because LeBron of this did a lot of things in this world that not just basketball, off the court, you know, building yeah. schools, mm -hmm. speaking up for, you mm -hmm. know, social justice and just being a man. And I think that, uh, in his in his age, when he played his career, and after he did what Bill Russell did back in his sixties, mm -hmm. um, spoke up, and you know, and it was tough for back then to speak up, but now we get more people speaking up about situation, and you know, so I get LeBron the edge for it's like he's right there with Mike, you know. Um, well, I hate to say one better than I don't, but I get the edge to Mike in this situation, but. 
Well, LeBron is, hey, if he's in the cockpit, LeBron is the co-captain. So, and then wrong with that, Batman and Robin, so. Yeah, yeah. What what separated Mike, in your opinion, oh, from, from the rest of the league? Because, um, you know, we, we guess, couldn't get him off of his square when he when he was at his best. Right. And you've played with him. You've played against him a lot when we were right. in New York. I guess I, once, you know, when his first got in the league, he saw the league was, you know, it was all man's number one. Number two, he figured, you know, he was getting the points and making an all-star team, but he seen something that was missing. He had to get stronger. And he got stronger, you know, between the fourth and fifth in the league. And after that, you know, the floodgates started opening up. He, you know, he he built his body up to take hits because Detroit was mm-hmm. beating him up. And he and he built his mind up to take it and don't get frustrated. And after that, he put, you know, he put the pizza, like the bacon the pieces. When he put the ingredients in it, he put it in the oven after that. He got past that and the training and mind focus mm-hmm. and, and start taking them hits after that. Just he went on a run, like no nope, and what, six out of eight, retired for the two years or whatever. But um he put the show on. I mean, it's like going to a concert. You know, you probably be the A A group when you close, he just put it to the basketball court being a closer and hitting big shots, making big plays, and then got everybody to start like Mike, 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 you know, mm-hmm. he was doing it. You know, the people say, oh, he's a great singer that wants to get a concert and get on tour when people start hearing you for themselves and start seeing you. Like, he, you know, they saw a pass, like a relay team, they passed the torch and he didn't look back. He kept running, still running because he, he brand himself after basketball. You know, he got a team, he got a basketball, he got a, he oh, got yeah. a, you know, he just, he just, he just going and he got a brand in himself. Yep. So, so he he's still moving forward for his basketball. He just he been out twenty some years, twenty two, twenty three years, but he's still he's still building that. He's still uh, he running down basketball court. He's still making things, making ways for himself and his family. Oh, when 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 you think about you know the book, the last enforcer, right? When, when you mm-hmm. think about when we were playing, when we were in the league, you and I played a lot mm-hmm. of a lot of. We got in the league about the same time. To be be honest mm-hmm. with you. Who's the toughest person that you face, man? Who who gave you problems? Um, I don't know. Who, who who didn't back down to Charles Oakley? Because I know you you wanted all the smoke. You you were looking for. Um, I mean, I think in basketball, you know, um, it's different than you in the rain boxing and mm-hmm. and, and on basketball court. I mean, on on, on a football field, you got to block a guy. Because sometimes you can go some up and down the court. Sometimes you might be on a different guy. But I mean, just talent wise, I mean, in our era, you play with one of the guys, Roy Tarford. You Oof. know, for guys can be a two way guy. And, uh, huh? Man, I mean, that, go ahead. Damn, I'm giving yeah. credit, you know, credit to do It's yeah. some guys that have bigger names. I mm-hmm. didn't look at guys called a big name. Mm-hmm. You know, because some of the guys with bigger names, they cried a lot. You know, <laughs> uh, Mikhail cried, Carl Malone. They were some of the best power forward, too. Mm-hmm. But I think overall, Roy Tarpin, like a Derek Coleman, like versatile guys, you know, even Sean Kent was more of all defense offense. But but Derek Coleman could have been and like Roy Tarpin could have been the best two power forward ever in my era. I don't say Corma Watson and a few other guys, but talent on the on the, the all star level. You look at uh, Cam McHale and Carl Malone because Carl Malone was in Utah, played with Stockton. McHale was in Washington. I mean, in Boston, playing with Bird, Paris. And you know DJ, so I think McHale had the best post-up moves. Come along, you know he you know third league score in NBA history. So you got to give him some props on that era. Mm-hmm. So, but 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 both way guys, two way guys. You know, she Wallace was in the you know late late in my career. She Wallace came in the league with like two way power forward guy who can score and you know be a fixer on defense too. So so we 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 talked a little bit about the new generation. Um, who do you enjoy watching, man? Like John Morant, Luca. What, what do you think about Luca? What? What's that um, I, I like Luca. Um, you know, I think Luca. If he if he don't watch this stuff, he's gonna fall into a James Harden situation. Too dumb, too ball dominant. Mm. I think that he too ball dominant, and he just and he crying a little too much. Yeah. I know superstars <laughs> to the cry, officials. But, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he led the he league in two, text. He led the he league in two, text. He carried two baby bottles, so he cried a little <laughs> too much. But, but talent, um, I think Phoenix should be embarrassed the way they let him take over. One man take over the game. 
and just take their hope of being the winner championship this year. But he definitely can play. I think that um, what he doing a night night in night out for you know for Dallas is you know they're gonna have to. I don't know for a transition this year where they you know got in the draft, but uh, I think he need to come back and shake. Uh, last year he was out of shape, but when he got in shape, he showed you what he could do on night night in night out. But um, John Morant, you know, it's, it's a little cocky, you know. He, he, you know, he got his money. Yeah. Um, he's talking a lot of stuff. So I mean, it ain't just because you get paid; you can talk. Your team got to come back and perform this year because they all gonna be pointed at you because you the one that said, you you know, Michael Jordan. Don't have a, you know, you 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 want to play Michael Jordan one on one. You start talking like that, <laughs> your name, but you know, you just have ten player. You better go to the top two or three players. Yeah, yeah. And your team better be winning, not just, you know, 500. Your team got to be at least 10 to 15 games or 500. And in your statement might, you know, more probably never be true, but people might revisit it one day. Like, oh, well, he said this, he said that. Now nah, he's living up to it. What do you think the difference, Oak, in Commissioner Stern, who was uh, who was the original owner to get things? Uh, I'm not, not owner, but commissioner to get commissioner. things. Yeah, commissioner to get things headed in a positive direction when the league was was kind of down, to be quite frank, right. when, when Stern took over. What do you think the difference in his approach and style opposed to Adam Silver? Like you said, style made fights. And our style made the fights. I think this day in the NBA, they watch the fights because it's shifted. It's more of a passion for us. Like, it's a global market. Yes. And most- more entertaining and more free spirit. They want everybody to be happy. All the players to be, you know, they want the fan and more engaged celebrities. And even though we had the celebrities more involved with coming to courtside, just net now the All Star game is more celebrities and friends and rappers. I don't think you know it's it's just it's just changed. And I don't know if it's sliding too much, but I think they need to pump the brakes a little bit and you know. And get back on the road and understand that there's still people coming to the game. You got to perform in a professional way, dress in a professional way, and it's getting real loose. Like I think it's a little out of control. But who am I to judge what they're doing? I'm just glad they're getting paid. Um, I hope that you know the salary keep going up. But well, yeah. Be- <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that they're getting paid. But what, yes, what about earning? I mean, I, we used to talk all the time about earning, earning your money. As a player, well, because a lot of guys aren't they, earning. Hey, it. They said Bitcoin's the cyber coin. The, the NBA is the best coin because eighty percent of your eighty percent of your people is overpaid. Mm. <laughs> that's a great investment, <laughs> you know. Eighty percent of them is overpaid, and then the other twenty percent, all of them making forty and fifty million. Yeah. That's the coin you need to invest into. The NBA stock, but like I said, they hid the money from us. They got to get in the money and. Hey, we we were getting six percent on dollar. They getting <laughs> they getting fourteen percent on the dollar. Yeah. Oh, do you ever talk to any of our ex teammates in New York? Oh uh, yes, I talk to guys from here and there with John, you, know. you ever talk to John huh? Starks? John Starks. You, you I talked to I'm on John Foundation. Okay. Um I, I you know, I was just left in New York the last week. I talked to a few of the guys. Not too much since the thing happened in New York on this, you know, five years ago with me at the garden. Get into uh, that a little bit. Get, get yeah, a lot of guys stayed away from that, but I mean, they know what's going on up there in New York, and they just, it's like seeing someone getting shot and you know scared to tell the police walking past you. So yeah, well, it just it's just one of them things. Well, it's but, crazy. Oh, listen, Kane, when you oh, when you think back on that situation, could it have been avoided? Did did, did you, you had? I don't know how it could have. Only way it could have been avoided if I wouldn't have came to the game. I mean. It was, it was all on them. Yeah. It wasn't like somebody if somebody else would have been sitting in that seat, that would have happened. The only way it'd been avoided if I would have shown up that night. So they sent four at you, Oak. They they know your reputation. They sent four. Well, it sent more than that. <laughs> the point was it was just disrespectful to send yeah. one. Yeah. I mean, I ain't I didn't do nothing to call for no one to come over there, but when someone got power and control, they use it and he use it to his advantage and and it didn't look good for the NBA owner. Right. The commission was there. Uh, just made the whole league look bad because I'm not the only one he had done that to. He did it to kids, to other people who you know walk a life, who spend their money to come in there. And you know, at a game, people might say anything. That's why I understand these days how these players be saying, 
that stuff ticked them off. Because people have been, you know, the heckle in Washington, Leon in Detroit, they've been saying stuff all our life. I remember about, Leon you know, like it was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> you, on, you on the court. Yes. Leon was bad. Yes, he was. And, and these guys let it, see, that's what I'm saying. They skin a little, you know, soft skin. That's mm-hmm. when you take all that stuff in. It's it's too much that in the NBA, but this guy in the crowd said this, this fan said that. I, people said, how, how you feel? I said, I don't even know the fans until the game, until I come out. I don't get into the fans. My game and look and see who I'm sitting here, see who's sitting there. But these guys, they get stat sheets on the bench. They talking to the fans on the game. I mean, it's okay to interact, but I think afterwards or before, okay. But not during the course of what your profession is. You got to do your job. Mm-hmm. What uh, What is that big three, coaching in the big three tournament? Ice Cube and everybody. Yeah. You guys been been actually doing most of the games have been here in Dallas. What 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 has that experience been like? I think it's a great experience. You know, being around a legend like George Gervin, Dr. J, yeah. uh, Lisa Lindsay, um, Nancy Lee. I mean, you no, know, Michael Cooper. So basically, most of the old school coaches that won a championship basically set me and a few other guys. But just to be back in a a group situation with people you watch, you know, growing up and now it's giving guys who chance who played the NBA wasn't great in the NBA or give them a chance as the kid grow up and watch them go out and play on the, at a high level. Uh, I think it's fun. Um, you know, the players, some of them think they better. I was, you know, they're going to think they better than what they are, but <laughs> yeah. sometimes you got to let them know, you know, it's still a team game, but it's on the 14 seconds. So you dribble 12 seconds, like, but two left. So move the ball, <laughs> move the ball. But it's a lot of fun because they real competitive. And I think the best of all, we all get along. You know, ain't, ain't no eagles this and that. But uh, Ice Cube and uh, Jeff did a great job of giving people opportunity, another chance to play uh, something they dreamed about. So it's 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 cool. I like it. Yeah. Um, best coach you ever played for, Rouse. Played for some, some different. Uh, when, I mean, a lot of people ask me that, and that's a great question, Z. I mean, but, Pat, um, Pat Riley. I, is, I, 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 tell, I, with, uh, I, I like Butch Carver. I tell everybody, I like Butch because he didn't, you know, he coached the game. He, he did X and O's on right. offense, defense, great at the timeout. Right. And another thing he did was he put the best player in a position every time down the court. Mm-hmm. That, Best fit his strength. Oh, Butch coached you where in in, t- in Toronto. Toronto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember that. So now. He he was good with the players. He knew what everybody can do, what you couldn't do. He used you as the game went on. Not see, I think that's what happened against us against Phoenix against uh, Houston. I think Pat Riley tried to get guys a minutes instead yes. of playing playing the coach to win. So you don't. I tell everybody in the playoff, it's a different time. You might play more. You might play less. It's all about, I always tell somebody, when you play the Bulls, don't sub until they sub. Because the Bulls' strength is weakness. When you sub, they go and run. Mm-hmm. It's, something, it's just something about the way Phil Jackson, them, they'll throw a little press or something on you. They'll get you off your game. And then, you know, like if you take a quick shot, they get run out. You know, they start hitting them three. So they, 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 once they get momentum in certain ways, they can get you. But uh, Butch, Butch was a guy that made sure that everybody know this – the situation you're gonna play, you ain't gonna play. And I like I just like the way how he prepared the preparation and how he did how he did Vince and Trace it when I was there. Yeah. Uh, I know he got fired because of some other stuff, but what I seen him for Pat Riley was a good game play, but he says so much controlling. Mm-hmm. And I think that got in the way of sometimes us. Yes. Because he's so controlling dictate. You know, so he didn't, you know, I heard him say I think with the Miami, oh I should have did this, I should have did that. We we brought you here to do that because you had the championship, mm-hmm. and we we changed our game to just dollar your play. So I like you know I you know I think Jeff got his style from Pat Riley, but mm-hmm. I definitely like with uh Butch. You know Don Nelson wasn't bad, but right. you know he was he was like something like Butch, but but you know Butch was on both sides. Don Nelson was just all offense, but Don Nelson was wasn't a bad offensive coach. Oh, he's a great offensive coach, great yeah. offensive mind. Right, like, so he gave you a yeah. freedom. He, he gave everybody freedom, and, and, and right, he was right. The kind of see, coach that's that why is, Patrick didn't like him because Patrick wanted the ball. See, you gotta be, you gotta be a special player to play with Patrick. Now, you know, yeah. people, why are you talking about Patrick? But Pat, he, I mean, you know, like, he gave us a hard time. I mean, his teammate. Mm-hmm. So, 
think about that. And, you know. Hey, listen, how, how did how did Virginia Union prepare you for life, for the oh. NB, for the next level? You know, a lot of guys, you know, you go to a smaller school and it's right. hard for you to find your way through the NBA. You lasted a long time coming from a small school. Uh, good question. But I think I had a lot of it in me before I even went to school, but uh, I think it was a tough-minded school. With every, you know, just the way the school was built. It was a small school, 1,500 students, uh, just going through the everyday life. It wasn't easy. They didn't give you nothing. You had to work hard for everything. And the coach was a great coach, uh, Dave Robinson. He stayed on as the players and, you know, make sure we, we walked the straight line. And, you know, I had fun there. But, like I said, it was it was there when I got there. It was hard work. It wasn't that easy. And, you know, I was used to hard work and doing things and, you know, like I said, wasn't a big school. I didn't get called in the shelf for like, you know, 20, 30,000 students. So it was, it's, it was really my type of style. Uh, you know, I can just walk to class. I had to catch a bus or drive. And um, it wasn't hard at all. But, you know, because I was used to doing things, you know, I like stuff to wear me out, uh, make me think a lot of things. You know, we started thinking a lot, a lot of stuff creeping your mind. So I tried, I stayed focused, mm -hmm. you know, because, uh, I was there four years on the way back home one time in four years. So I was, I was cool with it. Yeah. Oh, okay, I know you a guy, you have your hands in a lot of different things and you, you, you don't, I've never looked at you as a guy that would just sit around and play golf after retirement. Mm -hmm. So where, where do you see yourself? Where do you see your life, man? And I'm, I'm sure you want to make a difference for a lot of different people. Where do you see your life in say five years? What is Charles Oakley? What does that look like for you five years from now? Well, you know, um, you know, I think in the last five, six years, life changed a lot. Once I got married and so, you know, I got a daughter, five years old, stepson, and I'm growing with them, but I've still got work to do. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife stay on me and she just, you know, ride me all the time, you know, it ain't easy, you know, being married, but uh, <laughs> I'm fighting my way through it. It's just like a bump around the airplane, but I'm getting through it. Uh, but I just see, I'm not. Just know, say I'm, yes, like man. Just say yes to everything. I know that's not your huh? style. Just say yes to everything. <laughs> I know that's not your style. I don't love <laughs> that. But no, I just, no, I'm just, hey, you know what I mean? I'm not really, I don't press a lot of issues. I'm no laid back. A lot of people don't know that about me. But uh, I know it, yeah. I just keep trying to work out and reinvent things. Um, you know, I got my, oak. I just saw my foundation a year ago. I'm, I'm working with Oka Hunger. Um, my wife got a real estate license, she do taxes, and, you know, she's trying to change people's life. Um, you know, I do a lot of cooking events. Uh, I'm just trying to stay busy as long as I can mm -hmm. and uh, keep good energy around and uh, just keep living. Man, you, you, you'll never know how much I appreciate appreciate this. And I, like I said, I know you're a real one. And when I called you, you said, only because it's you, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and I, that means the world to me, man. I, I really appreciate it. We had a lot of good times. Uh, through our little two and a half years, but ju just getting to know you, man, was a pleasure because you are so real and you keep it real. And I can't say that about everybody, but um, <laughs> this was fun. Thanks for jumping yeah, on. on it was sport, great. Uh, you know, I know you went through the, you know, life uh, after, you know, playing, you know, doing, yeah. working with the Mavericks. Now yeah. you, you know, he's doing radio, um, TV with the Mavericks. Yeah. And um, I think that um, once you see what's going on around the league, and I got a chance to coach a couple of years, see the, the big change and everything. And, yes. you know, you, I took a step back, like, wow, they loud this, they loud that. Because when you play, I know coaches, especially in New York, uh, you know, like, Oh, when this one that would happen, that one. So everything they said wouldn't happen twenty years. They just letting it happen now, yeah. freely. Just letting that. They just letting it. You know, just I'm like, wow. Yeah. And like, and like, oh, you know, you see a guy get six, seven turnovers by halftime, miss right. six weeks old. <laughs> it's okay. It's the game now. I'm like, oh wow. We just go. So it's just like, man. It's it's. it's sometimes I have to start watching the games. Yeah. And I know hey. for you doing your job, I I, I take my hat off to you because it's not easy to do. No, it's not. Because it's a whole different, it's like 80% different than when we played. Yeah. Oh, let, real, before you go, just just give me your top five Mount Rushmore guys. Top, your 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 fab five as far as the NBA is concerned. Now or the whole last 20 the years, whole, 30 years. And, and, and also to add to that, Oak, do you think they got the top 75 players right this year? No. 75th anniversary. 
I'm gonna tell you the top seven to five. Three guys they miss. They miss um, Vince Carter. Yes, sir. Play Thompson. and Kyrie. So I know pe- I know people that go through us and down this and that. If you're gonna put Dennis Rodman on anything, you got to put Kyrie on it. Because Dennis Rodman was a big A. A big what? Big A ass. <laughs> <laughs> big ass. You know. And he played the game off the court and on the court. So, but my five, five runs more. I'm going with, um, I'm going at LeBron the point. LeBron at the point. Mike at the two. Mike at the two. Oh, I'm about to put, uh, whoo, man. It's tough, man. It, it, it is so it's tough. It's tough. I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with Kobe. I mean, I think that I want to put KD there. I'm gonna go with Kobe. I'm gonna go with uh, at the power. Probably gonna go with Tim Duncan, and I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with Shaq over Will Chamberlain over. Bill. Well, Will, I won't Will, but I ain't see Will. But I would I would take Kareem too. But I'm know that you know. I want to go Moses. So it's so many. I, it is. Like, you build your team that, by the you build your team by your one, two, and three. Yeah, yeah. So I got LeBron to play anything. MJ can play two, three. Um, Kobe can play one, two. In a change, you know, four and five. Um, I couldn't have put uh, KD at four. And a guy can step out and shoot threes. Yeah. But um, you know, Tim Duncan changed the game, yes. and uh, Shaq changed the game for his force, but. It's, I mean, I haven't changed it over the last five, ten years because I think I'd added Shaq more. Yeah. I had Kareem, I had Kareem and I had Wilk before. So now I put Shaq, you know, because like I said, everybody said, why not Bill Russell? But Bill Russell don't fit in with that. They say he got 11 rings. I said, there's a lot of guys that rings. I well, mean, well, 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 11 rings, shouldn't that account for, for something? Yeah. I mean, I mean, winning is the name of the game, right? I know, yeah, well, you, I know you feel like that. So I should, definitely feel should like 11, that. But, but he, listen, was a, he was a defensive guy. He wasn't a two-way guy. Right, right. But but he did a lot. And, it's, you know, like it's six or seven guys on the team got six or seven rings, too. <laughs> yeah, that's but, true. Um, but isn't, but he, shouldn't, there be, shouldn't there be something to be said oh, for championship and winning at the magnitude that, that Bill Russell – I think he's the GOAT. I really do. And I'm talking yeah. I'm talking on and off the court. And let me say this. I think the hardest thing, man, to do is to pick top five guys of all time. I, I, right. I think that's ludicrous. Yeah. I don't, I don't it think is you, tough. Yeah, I don't think you it's really tough. can. I mean, you think about what Bernard King did as a player throughout his career. Bernard King came through Dallas, oh, got 50 points. Took a little quick flight down to San Antonio, got 50 points. Oh, yeah, by the way, we play San Antonio the next night. He had 50 points again. So I, I just think it's it's virtually impossible. I argue with Mark Aguirre and a lot of different guys that we play with, man, and I'm always thinking that I don't think you can you can possibly pick the top five players of all time because the, uh, er- the errors are different. Um, the rules were different. Hell, we would foul out, man, if we, the way we played – when we were in New yeah. York, we, we they would, said, you know, Elgin Baylor, a lot of Elgin like, Baylor. Was, you know, oh my God. I mean, they said, if you're talking about the two guards, he could, you know, uh, him, Incredible. Mike, Kobe, probably the best, you know. Yeah. But anyway. Who knows? But people go by, you know, I guess who made the most noise. Right, 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 right. You know, right. So who made the most noise? Uh, probably be LeBron, uh, Magic, Mike, uh, I mean, Shaq made a lot of noise. Who? That's what. Anyway, that's what we should go about in your era. Did you make the noise? Yeah. You know. So. Well, I, I have a problem, and I love both these guys. Ben Wallace, first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't agree with, and that's just my opinion. We all have our opinions. Oh yeah. Dennis Rodman, first ballot Hall of Famer, as good as no. he was defensively and as a rebounder, he was all defensive team. I think three or four right. times. Right. They go thing, about that. Yeah. Same thing with Ben. But yeah, I'm talking, well, yeah. I'm just talking overall game. Overall yeah, they, I mean they they had changed. They got lucky. I, mean, I think they, they put Bobby Jones in there a couple years ago. He wasn't even. Um, he was for being, you know, he for be a defending, you know, for Philly when they won the championship. So, 
Yeah, I don't think his career is like, you know, eight points, five rebounds. I mean, so they go by, now they say they end about what you did in college. I don't, I don't, like I said, in life, when you got control of, they picking who was, who they figure was good people, I guess. So well, I don't if, know. If I, go, I didn't, I'm like, how did Dennis Rodman get them? But, but he got five or six rings. Yeah, I guess that's so why, so why Robert Horry is not in there? Oh, he'll eventually get in, I think, because of I'm the winning. Though. Yeah, just because of the winning, but. When you look he at two, what two with Houston on one, I think he might have two. I asked two, yeah, he had two. Yeah, so but his full body of work, I, I think overall was really good. But hopefully you I, get I, in I there. Hopefully you get in there soon. Eh? Well, oh. oh no, they gonna put me. They gonna have to build another room for me. <laughs> I'm, 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 gonna be hey, I'm gonna be isolated. Hey, listen, man, I appreciate they, your time. They gonna make sure when I eat, I'm gonna, I'm that guy in jail get twenty three and one. Right. <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody gonna be too close to me. Right. No, I appreciate your time, man. I'll be in touch. And All right, uh, good luck with everything, okay? All Thank right. you. All right, thanks. And for sir, my main man Oak. Mm-hmm.